Hey, we are the heat changers. And are everywhere. I have to admit that I don't feel concerned about the current energy crisis because I haven't been affected personally right now. Ukraine, the war, the prices are increasing and of course it creates uncertainty. I'm a freelancer and uncertain customers of mine are cancelling their projects because of the uncertainty. It is an uncertain period and certainly reinforces the idea that one should be self-sufficient. Interdependence on a particular country can be dangerous, especially as in today's world, some governments are moving to more autocratic tendencies. Belgian government, they don't help a lot. They only dropped the uh, VAT or the taxes from 21% to 6% on energy, on gas and electricity, but the price I have to pay on a three monthly base went from 300 to 1300 euros now. So it doesn't make, uh, it, it doesn't help a lot, I mean, it's hard. I believe this is self-inflicted and that we should have been driving more towards green energies sooner. Europe doesn't have its own uh, oil or gas reserves or massive amounts and we use coal mainly in some countries. I kind of feel like trapped kind of as a victim of it because I will need to pay a higher energy bill this winter and the winter has already started. The energy crisis is a heating crisis. 50% of the total energy demand in Europe is for heating. 70% of that energy still comes from fossil fuels. 42% of the gas consumption is for heating. And gas prices are particularly prone to spikes due to the weather and tight supplies. The European benchmark rose to a record high of 335 euros per megawatt hour in the spring. Since then, prices are still up to 300%. European natural gas prices could climb by another 60% this winter. What is more, gas prices are likely to stay high for the next few years. Uh, heat is uh, half of the energy we, we consume, so that's hot water or space heating. And I know not everyone is aware. I was not aware before I joined the, the sector, so I'm happy uh, I, I know that now. Uh, and I hope more and more people become aware, uh, aware of this. She is Alexandra Sutu, communications officer from Solar Heat Europe, formerly known as the European Solar Thermal Industry Federation. She will be with us in every episode, sharing some policy insights from the European market. This is the biggest amount of energy that we use. And right now, for example, with the gas, most of the gas we use in Europe is for heating. Some people might think it's for electricity, but it's not actually, it's for, for heating. Either the buildings so or the hot water that you use to take a shower or the nice uh, heating you get in your room and you wake up and you are happy. You have a, a warm house uh, used in industry and so on to produce all the uh, things that we are using every day. You are European. You are from Romania. You live in Belgium. You are young, female, and work in the renewable energy sector. So the full package of a truly mm -hmm. European. So this situation and this specific point uh, of your life, how does it feel? I'm passionate about sustainability and I started to uh, look into more sustainable ways of uh, building our society since I was a student. And uh, this is how I uh, ended up working uh, in the renewable sector for, for Solar Heat Europe in this case. And uh, yeah, the, when I look at the energy crisis, and not only the energy crisis, but actually the climate crisis, it kind of frustrates me because I, I know there are uh, uh, better ways of doing things. I'm young now, of course, and I want to uh, have a good life also in two or three decades from now on. But I know it's also our responsibility to build better right now for future generations. 
we have the solutions there. We just have to, to implement them. So everything is there. We just have to take action. You have a personal and direct contact with all the manufacturers and suppliers from the solar heating and cooling industry in Europe or who are active in Europe. And how do you see this community? What would be your feeling about the atmosphere and the, um, and the willingness to make this change in Europe, in the energy sector? I think they are ready. I think they are very passionate. And I think another aspect that uh, makes me happy to uh, be part of this sector is that everyone cares about the, the impact that we have on the environment. So, of course, it is about the technology and how we can improve it. Of course, it's also about growing the market because it's also business at the end of the day. But it's also about the impact that we have in the world and the fact that we want to contribute to uh, reducing emissions and to uh, just building a, a better life, uh, not only for the people that are now here, but also for the planet itself. I try to reduce my carbon footprint or keeping it low as much as possible. I ride my bike wherever I can go. I use public transport. I don't have a car. I prefer putting on a sweater rather than turning on the heat. Uh, during the weekend, I promised myself to go out more in nature so I don't spend time at my own place and in the meantime using energy. So I go out the whole day, uh, enjoy nature. We are trying to limit the usage of um, warming, heating at home. So during the day we try not to use it much. I know I should be maybe asking my energy provider what type of sources of energy they are using and maybe pushing more for renewable ones, but I have to say I'm not doing it. It feels like too much work with little return. Call it destiny if you like, but my name is Marisol. I come from a very sunny country, Mexico, and I have been working in the solar industry for the last 14 years. I studied business administration, have a master's degree in European studies. Most part of my career has been in marketing. Currently, I live in Berlin, Germany, and I am an independent business and marketing consultant for the solar industry. One of my projects is this, the heat changers. It is time to explore new ways of promoting renewable energies and in particular the power of solar. Social media and podcasts are important because they allow you to reach, mature and engage with your target audience, no matter their location. This is a sophisticated way to connect with the audience, to generate brand awareness, contacts and leads. Most important, the heat changer approach is both content and community driven, a combination that is really unique. He is Florian Wessendorf, General Director of Solar Promotion International, the company organizing InterSolar, the world's leading exhibition series for the solar industry and main sponsor of this podcast. Our goal is to open markets, promote knowledge exchange and at the same time provide a global stage for innovations. Our vision, a renewable, decentralized, digital and around-the-clock energy supply. That's exactly what Heat Changes does as well. Our vision and mission are the same. The community approach is what I find most fascinating. It is important to emphasize that the renewable energy includes solar heating and cooling and that the technology to harness solar energy for heating water already exists and can easily replace less green ways of heating water. This podcast is part of the energy conversation. As a matter of fact, it is about a hot topic. Finally, not only climate activists are talking about the urgent need of using renewable energies instead of fossil fuels. Finally, the scope of the energy conversation goes beyond electricity and extends to the heating part. So how to supply affordable and clean energy for heating during the winter? How to run manufacturing processes with reliable and affordable energy? How to save the planet? Heat changers have an answer to those questions. Solar heating systems. You will hear about these three words in this podcast. 
We will share with you stories of people who are working in this industry. They will talk about technologies and we will also have some information about good practices. Why? Because we want you to trust the technology. And Are you ready to become a head changer? <laughs>